Hey guys, this is Mr. Sal. Let's look at that midpoint formula stuff. Uh, just for a little bit more clarification on what we went over in class. And uh, let's take a look. So if we had these two points, which I've already put on the graph, and uh, let's connect these with a line. And this is about what our line would look like. Well, if we made the triangle thing, uh, which is kind of relating this to the... Uh, distance formula, right? So let's take a look at these two. Is All I would have to do is find the center of these two. So, for example, with this purple line, we can see that these two are about 10 apart. So if I went 5 in one direction from both points, then I would end up uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It should be about right there, right? That's the center of that line. So in other words, the point, the midpoint of that red line should be where those two intersect. But let's just check with the green line. This one is also, well, this one's also 10 apart. So uh, we count five away from both, from uh, this purple line to the point as well. And that's the five point. We can see that the two lines will intersect right here at the middle. So that's one way to do it if you have a graph. But... In fact, uh, I think all the ones on the homework will not show a graph. So let's go ahead and take a look at why it is, why the midpoint formula is what it is. Now we can look at this example that we've just seen, and we can see that uh, the distance between these two is 10, right? And so the average of that would be 5, which means that's how far away they are from the two endpoints. Same with this x value stuff here. And the middle is how we kind of describe that, right? So it's really an average of the x values from the two points and the average of the y values of the two points. The average tells us where the middle of that data is, okay? Now we're just looking between the two, and if we're only looking at a set of data that has two, two values in it, then we would have an average which would show us the middle of those two values. So since it's an average, we would take the x value here and add it to this x value. And this x value here is negative 8. And if I added that to this x value, which is 2, then I would have a total of 6, right? Uh, in fact, it would be negative 6. So that would put me about right here, but if I took half of that which would be the average, it would put me at where x is negative 3. So we look at the y values the same way. This y value here is a negative 6. And this y value here is 4. So when I add those two together, I get a negative 2. Now that's not the middle, though. It's just, again, how I'm... I'm taking the sum of that and then to find the average I would divide that by 2 which would place us at y is negative 1. So again it shows us where those two lines intersect that would be the midpoint of the line which is drawn. So hopefully that makes sense with the formula right is uh, this is the sum of the x values but when we divide it by 2 we're finding the average of two values. Same with the y values when we add those two y's together we get the average of the y's, which between two, two numbers, uh, when we find the average of two numbers, just two numbers, then it shows us where the middle is. Now, there are other proofs on YouTube. You guys can find those, but um, they're longer, and I think they're a little bit more taxing as well. So maybe you like this one or not. Uh, let's look at an example of how to apply this. So here we have... Uh, two points we want to find the midpoint of. So once again, if I look at this, using the formula specifically, and we can see that I've replaced the x1 with the 1 6, the x2 with this negative 2 thirds, and then the y1 with the negative 8 thirds, and the y2 with 5 halves. Now again, the formula is showing the average of these two values so when I solve this, uh, for this one specifically, I'm going to need common denominators, right? So I need to multiply this 3 by 2, 
and the 2 by 2. Uh, for the y's, I need a common denominator of 6. So I'm going to multiply by 2 here and 3 right here. And this is what it produces. So let's go ahead and add those two numerators together. And now just simplifying these, and then we can work on the complex fraction. So then I get this. Uh, from here, I can simplify the fraction here on the left to make that a negative 1 half divided by 2. And then on the right, I can simplify that already with working with this complex fraction would get 1 over 12 because we're cutting the sixth into 2 each so that give us twelfths and then finally just working with this complex fraction here so I have a negative 1 half that's been divided into 2 which would give me a negative 1 fourth and this right here would be our final answer